We're live. Yeah. Hello, hello. 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 <laughs> what a surprise to see you here. This is crazy. You sitting here on my couch. <laughs> on your couch in my childhood home. Hello. Um, welcome. Um, I'm Riley Anspa. Um, and with me, this is crazy. This is, I mean, it's such an honor to meet you. Um, this is, I mean, you may know her as Monica from Touched by an Angel. Ever heard of it? Or um, New York Times bestselling author of Box of Butterflies. Ever heard of that? If you haven't, I don't know why you're here, but welcome. Um, and most recently, author of unexpected i'm gonna do like the influencer hand behind the thing unexpected blessings and i may know her as my mother oh, hello roma downey hello. hello oh so nice to what find a me pleasure and on you. this mother's day mother's weekend. day weekend and the eve of your birthday <gasps> Yes, it's my birthday tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow, those years just keep rolling by. But you have used your time well. You've used your time very well. Yes. So, I mean, let's just jump right into it. Yes. Well, this was the product of this crazy two years that we've had over COVID. And, um, you know, I found myself picking up the pen once again, well, actually the laptop, um, and writing a new book. I had such a great time writing Box of Butterflies, my previous book, and um, had so much incredible feedback from that book, from you, the readers, that um, I decided to take a deeper dive into that story. Uh, Box of Butterflies had a subtitle, Discovering the Unexpected Blessings All Around, and um, I really wanted to take the chance here to dive into what those unexpected blessings were in my life in the hopes that it would encourage the reader or the listener, because I also recorded the book uh, for anybody that prefers to hear a book. And um, the realization uh, that I came to was that really the blessings are everywhere. We just have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Lovely. So how was how was the process different between Box of Butterflies and Unexpected Blessings? Well, Box of Butterflies really became more of a spiritual memoir. I, um, you know, I told a little bit more of a linear story of the journey of my life, which included a lot about you. Um, Not to brag. An unexpected blessing, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> right here. <laughs> She's just the greatest daughter, and it's so fun to be able to do this with this you. Is, I mean, is, what are they, who gets so to sit funny. down on a live video and um, have a conversation and try to make it feel natural? And just so natural with all the all this uh, <laughs> setup. We're like, ooh, all these like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like ten ring lights. And we're like, oh, just a normal well, Thursday did, at home. Did I mention it was my birthday tomorrow? And so, you know, I have the years are creeping in. And a lot of my work in the last few years, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of my work was on Zoom because we couldn't go into the office. You know, the office was closed and and so, first of all, I ordered one of these ring lights. No, no, you know, you know the kind I mean. And then, you know, I thought I ordered two. Now I have ten. We're like wrapped in a sea of lights. It's here. really, it's doing wonder. I can't stop. I'm like, I'm we every look, photo we I so take. Good, don't we? Um, oh, speaking, of, I'm seeing in the chat. Boy, I need that book. Where can I buy it? A signed, hold on, signed copies signed. at premiercollectibles.com/roma. If you can believe it. Um, my mother's going to be signing copies. I'm going to be signing copies throughout the <laughs> you hour. You can and get your own. Yeah, I hope. Well, you know, I really felt like it was a great opportunity to gift it for someone you love, mm -hmm. for your mom. For Mother's Day weekend Mother's coming Day up. Weekend. It'll probably arrive delayed, but you can but be you, like, I got you. You could. Mother. You could take a little snapshot right now of the screen of me signing it. You mm -hmm. can say, I got you this signed mm -hmm. book. Um but I'm sure that many of you have already bought your Mother's Day gifts, haven't you? Yes, and they're in the mail um, <laughs> because COVID and shipping and um, yeah. all of that. Um, but yeah, I'm just let me just see any more. Well, the, the um, 
the book is beautiful um, to look at also mm -hmm. as we approach the spring season here and it's covered in butterflies. As Riley knows, a butterfly is my thing. And we have butterflies all every inch of my mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> and angels. Like every, you see this giant everywhere. angel behind us. Um, well, when I was a little girl, um, my, my mother died, as you know. My mother died, unfortunately, when I was just 10. And my father took me up to the cemetery. And um, it was the first Mother's Day after she'd passed. And behind this tombstone flew up this little butterfly. And my dad said, would you look at that wee butterfly? That could be your mother's spirit right there. And so the butterfly for my whole life has just been a symbol of of my mom, a symbol of spirit, a comforter, a reminder that I'm not alone. And um, and so it's just sort of followed me through my life. Now, um, obviously we live here in Southern California, so the garden is often filled with butterflies, but you know, I'm talking about jewelry or a t-shirt or mm -hmm. a tattoo, times when I've needed it the most, um, a little butterfly has somehow shown up as an unexpected blessing. And um, and really that's what I was where I was going to with this book. It's it's um, a 90 day devotional really to nourish your soul and open your heart. And um, and it's an invitation for you to to take this 90 days with me. Each section of the book, um, I tell a personal story. It starts with a really great quote, something that that has inspired me, something that has touched me throughout my life. Um, and then I just sort of ch chat about how the application of that maybe to my life or your life, how it might be helpful. Um, because I wrote the book really hoping that it would open your heart and that it would remind you that we're not alone. People have gone through a lot this last few years in particular have been challenging times for people. But um, uh, the process of writing the book was uh, very cathartic for me. I always find that writing and remembering um, about, you know, just that, we, that we're not alone, that we have, you know, that God and his goodness walks with us. And um, look, I'm so busy talking, I forgot to be <laughs> you signing. Keep writing. I had to keep writing. <laughs> um, did, as you're writing, um, did you, did you have any moments of writer's block during this? Were there any any ones that were harder to write than others, or did you find times where it didn't it didn't flow as much, or any stories that were harder? Well, I think that there's always a little bit of writer's block. Um, you know, the idea of the blank page um, can feel a little intimidating, and particularly for me, I like to do my writing in the early mornings, um, uh, but not before I've had had a cup of tea. And um, I do my best thinking in the mornings. And we're very fortunate here that we live uh, near the ocean. And I that find that I do life. my best thinking by the ocean. And so, you know, I would just take time to think, to reflect. I had certain themes that I knew I wanted to touch upon in the book. Uh, of Themes of, you know, I. I a theme, unfortunately, that has shown up through my life, Riley knows well, is the theme of loss. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've, um, unfortunately, my mom passed, and my dad passed, my brother passed, my beloved Della Reese passed. Um, so I've had to deal with a lot of grief in my life. But um, you know, there's sometimes there's no way through that, but through it. And thankfully, because I'm a person of faith, I never felt I had to walk through those experiences by myself. And I've had the blessing of having an amazing family. Wow. And um, just for anybody out there that's curious, my, uh, my mother, her name was Maureen O'Reilly. And um, when I was pregnant with Riley, I, I was a mom who decided not to find out whether I was having a boy or a girl. Um, and I didn't even realize until Riley was born how much I wanted a daughter. I think I had longed for the mother-daughter relationship my whole life and um, because I'd missed my mom so much. So when the doctor said, it's a girl, and placed this one in my arms, my I thought my heart was just going to burst 
with joy because you were a lovely wee baby. I know. And then what happened? What happened then? I know. What's nice though is that Riley is a pretty gender neutral name. So even if I were a boy, it would have worked. Yeah, it would have worked. Yeah. But uh, so I decided to honor my mother, her last name being O'Reilly, and call my kid Riley. Mm -hmm. But Riley will share with you herself the challenges oh. of having it spelt the Irish way. I oh. mean, it's just, it's every coffee shop, it's R I L E Y. It's th then it'll get R A Y L E I G H, like Raleigh, <laughs> like North Carolina. It's it's truly, it's as if everyone's been trying. It's like how many other ways to can spell we name. spell it? But probably the most common way people think R I L E Y. R I L E Y. Yeah, but she's R E I L L Y. Mm -hmm. but, I just always have to tell people it's it's like the last name. Yeah, um, that my the last name is my first name. Yeah, um, and my mom <laughs> for years because I'm. <laughs> I'm an, I'm an actor and, and my mom is always just like, you should, you should really capitalize on the Irish thing. You should really <laughs> like, you should, your stage name should be Riley O'Reilly. Come on. <laughs> if you heard Riley O'Reilly. You'd think like some the Lucky well, Charms Leprechaun it. is going to never come forget dancing it. through the door. I think it's a great idea. But... <laughs> Whoever it listens would be to their mother, she just gimmick. doesn't listen to her mother. I, you're right. Do any of you out there have daughters that just don't listen to you? But listen, there we go. Look, I'm signing. I'm working my way through these. Here. Let me... For anybody out there that wants well, one of these, again, if books. you want, I keep pointing the wrong way. If you want them, go to premiercollectibles.com/roma. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Riley. What? I don't know. It's just so fun and strange <laughs> to be I, doing this with you. Well, because I mean, it's because like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, a, a lot of you know my mom's work. I, I, my work is as a, as a comedian a lot of the time. My daughter so, is a comedian. Can you tell? And so I, I host as my job and, and hosting for very just different um, audiences and different, uh, just kind of different energy of like it's just so funny to bring it's just so funny yeah i know <laughs> i know it's kind of wonderful oh though. no it's great isn't it great it's i'm, I'm it's having great. a great time it's because it is um a, a mother's day experience um when riley was very little uh she um i i was on touch by an angel from i think the years were like You're 1994 so to, you just pop them there, love. 1994 Ooh. to 2004, approximately, almost 10 year period. And um, maybe some of you saw Touch by an Angel. I know it had a had a big had a pretty big following, and it was such a a lovely show, such a sweet show, um, where I and the amazing Della Reese, who was Riley's godmother. Mm -hmm. Um, played undercover angels and we showed up in people's lives when they had some kind of issue. They came to an emotional crossroads and it really wasn't until they called out in their, in their hurt or in their wound and asked God to help them that as angels we were able to say, I'm actually not a doctor, nurse, teacher, you know, whatever, whatever else we might have been pretending to be that week, a clown. I'm actually not a clown in the circus. I'm an angel and I've been sent by the Almighty with a message. And the message was always the same. And the message was spectacular, which is that there is a God, that he loves you and that he wants to be part of your life. And um, so one particular episode um, that was about the circus, this is why I mentioned it. Um, I had a very special guest star, which was the three or four year old. I can't remember yeah, how old you were. Small. You were a little person. Um, but I am a clown, so that is. <laughs> yeah. And we were both in full clown makeup. I remember I had these shoes that must have been mm -hmm. 10 feet long, which are quite complicated to walk in. And um, Riley, you know, the only thing, like very young Riley was told, I don't think you had a line, you barely could speak, Yeah, was not to look at the camera. Well, you tell a child not to look at the camera, and what's the first thing they do? <laughs> Straight to down. Look at the camera. And so the entire the entire <laughs> scene, we were trying to act, and we could hear the director going, don't look at the don't camera, dear. Don't look at the camera. And she's just staring right down the barrel of the camera. But I'm making sure that these, okay, no, these are all. Are these the signed ones? I'm checking these are not. 
signed, I don't think. But um, let me just again, if you want a signed copy, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, premiercollectibles.com backslash Roma. Um, I dedicated this book to my family, to my husband, Mark, to my two amazing stepsons, James and Cameron, and to the incredible and very, very funny <laughs> Riley. Um, because when we, uh, my Riley and I were, um, it was just the two of us. I was a single mom up until Riley was, I don't know, six or seven, um, uh, when we met Mark and the boys and, um, and when we all got together and we blended our family together, you know, that also was an unexpected blessing. Anybody out there that's brought a family together, it's not, not always the easiest thing to do. And we just feel so grateful that our family was able to merge. And, um, you know, I got uh, two great sons, Riley got two brothers. She was clearly in danger of growing up into adulthood, having never lost a game of Monopoly, because I was one of those mothers that used to let her win at everything. But once I'm we... a very sore loser now. Are you? Oh my God, I'm terrible. Oh, are you? Oh, I'm I'm really, because really Because of that, bad. it's my fault? No, I think it's, it's I mean, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a time on you. Just my own. Oh, perfectionism is really fun. Uh, uh, let's get into some, um, I know that people have been sending in some questions. Oh. So love let's um, get into that. Ooh, here's a question from Kathy. Kathy wants to know, what's the biggest takeaway you want your readers to gain from the book? Oh, gosh. I think, you know, there's a, there's a poem that I quote in the book from a poet, a poetess who I love called Mary Oliver. And she says something to the effect that someone once gave her a box of darkness and that it's taken her till now to realize that this too was a gift. And I think I would love the takeaway from anyone who reads Unexpected Blessings is to realize that, you know, stuff's gonna happen. You know, I mean, bad things happen to people all the time, but there's a way, it's how you view something, you know, that if there's a way to reframe something or um, that we can find the blessings and maybe it's just that you have to get to a certain age i'm not telling you how old i'm going to be tomorrow but to get to a certain age that you realize that um you know like my heart was broken when my mother died um because she hadn't even been sick or anything it was like she just she just died of a of a massive heart attack and it was like the lights had been turned out so um but i believe that the preparation of my heart the compassion that I learned, the empathy, to be able to understand what it is to suffer, to be able to understand uh, how to be with somebody as they go through something, was the very quality that was needed of me when I went into audition to play Monica on Touched by an Angel. So now would I rather if my mom had not died? Of course I would rather. But, but there was an unexpected blessing and just the qualities that I had developed, that I was able to bring those into that role and minister to so many people for so long as the angel Monica. So I think that's the takeaway, Riley, would just be mm. that people would, would learn to see that just the blessing all around them. And for me, being in nature, like I can never underestimate just the power of going outside, you know, if I'm feeling down or feeling bad about anything or feeling worried, just to go outside to see the sky, to breathe in, to see greenery, you know, just to, to feel like connected, to think about the people I love. You know, if we, the minute you start with gratitude, the minute you have a, a heart that's, that's in, in gratitude and everybody's got something we can think about, oh, I, I wish I had this or I wish I had that or I don't have enough. But my dad used to do the old glass half full, half empty thing. And, you know, it's easy. It's a, it's perception, isn't it? You can think about the glass being half empty. But really, if you think about what you have, starting with the people you love, the faces of the people you love, your family, your friends, um, your pets. We have a house full of dogs here, and we're big, big dog lovers of our fur babies. But the minute you start counting your blessings, it, like, fills your heart 
with gratitude and gratitude is key i think to everything mm. um let's I'm, see i'm signing you're signing um let me see well speaking of because yeah, you, you you talked a little bit venturing into um monica and touch my name everything question from um Karen, how did you? Hi, Karen. How did you start out in acting and producing, and did you always have a passion for it? Oh yes, I did. I mean, like you, I did. I always had a passion. I was always in the school play and that kind of thing. Unlike Riley, however, I cannot sing. I'm maybe one of the few Irish people. These all signed. Yeah, those are all signed. That actually cannot carry a tune, whereas Riley is an amazing, amazing singer. Oh. Stop it. Um, but I um, I went to art school at first. I thought I was going to be a painter. And um, while I was in art school, I studied the work of the Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh. Um, and uh, and Van Gogh had um, uh, you know a mental illness, I guess, and towards the end of his life, the end of his career, you can even see it illustrated in his in his artwork and his brush strokes that got. Um, more manic and but amazing painter, beautiful work, very powerful. And in a series of letters that he wrote to his brother, he said that it was no longer enough for him to be the painter. He felt like he wanted to be the paint. I love that quote. Uh, yeah, and it really struck me. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought, gosh, I love painting and I feel artistic, but I want to be the paint. I want to be an actor. And so I ended up going to uh, drum school. And are you keeping me straight here? Yeah, they, these are all unsigned. Those are unsigned. Yeah. Uh, I ended up going to drama school and um, I had a dream uh, to be on Broadway. I'm skipping through uh, lots of times when I wasn't working and couldn't get work. <laughs> I was checking coats and waiting tables and doing all those things. But I had a dream to be on Broadway. And in the early 90s, um, I was so fortunate. I got to uh, be in a play called The Circle with uh, the late Rex Harrison and Glynis Johns. Rex Harrison, you may remember from the movie My Fair Lady, he played Henry Higgins. Glynis Johns, Riley knows who she is um, because uh, my fair, uh, Mary Poppins was maybe one of your favorite movies mm -hmm. when we were growing one up. One of my first movies. Right? Probably. Yeah. Um, and Glynis Jones played the mom in that. So it was such a, a thrill to get to appear on um, on the Broadway stage with with them. Um, so yeah, I've loved it. I've, lo I've loved what I do. After Touch by an Angel ended, um, for a time, I was just uh, exhausted and glad of a little bit of a break and to get to spend more time together with Riley. But... Um, you know, I just would, would pray and said, what, you know, what's next? What am I supposed to do next? Um, hoping that I would be guided and um, the opportunity to start my company, Lightworkers, uh, came about. And um, through Lightworkers, the uh, production company, uh, along with my husband, Mark Burnett, uh, we were able to make the Bible series which was an epic 10-hour uh, series that first aired on the History Channel, if anybody out there got to see it. Um, and from that and, and unseen footage, we were able to adapt the Jesus narrative and tell the story of Jesus in the feature film, Son of God. Um, and so that was very powerful uh, work to, to be involved in. We shot in Morocco, uh, which stood in for um, the Holy Land. And I was gone for, for many months. Um, you were able to come visit uh, a few times and I was able to get back, I think, a few times. But um, there was a sacrifice there for us to have mm -hmm. to be apart all that time. But it was um, a beautiful series. And, um, and I know from the response we had from people all over the world that it really touched people that you know for for people of faith of course it was a great way to see the stories of the bible that they know and love so well come to life on the screen but for many people that, that don't share our faith um they were able to maybe get an introduction to the bible um and those stories because it was 
they are great stories. I mean, it is the greatest story ever told um, with some amazing actors. And um, I myself had the opportunity to step into playing the role of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So um, that was uh, quite an experience as well. Mm -hmm. And do you, and I, and I know you and I have talked a lot about this, but that like at this point in your life, you found a lot of joy in producing. Yes, I have. I've really en enjoyed um, getting to, you know, choose material, uh, develop material. The, the, the actual process of bringing something to the screen is incredible. I mean, I'm a storyteller. I'm a storyteller. Um, and whether that uh, showed up in acting and telling stories through my actual performing, or whether I get to be behind the camera and help develop those stories to bring them to the screen. I mean, as you know, this last year, I've been working on a, um, a an amazing a film that will come out next Easter called On a Wing and a Prayer with um, Dennis Quaid, Heather Graham, and Jesse Metcalf. And um, it's a based on a true story of Doug and Terry White who got on a private plane um, in Florida on Easter Sunday, 2009, to fly back home to Louisiana. And um, while they were mid-flight in the air, the, the pilot tragically dies of a heart attack and this family are hurtling through the air and they don't know how to fly the plane. Now, talk about a, an incredible story uh, they were a, a family of faith. They prayed as anybody might in such a situation. And um, miraculously, well, I won't spoil the story, but there's a great story there. <laughs> <laughs> a great story there. And so that'll be the next film that comes out of Easter. But yeah, Riley, you're right. I've loved producing. I'm not in that movie. I produced that movie along with MGM and Lightworkers. And um but, uh, you know, I enjoy my work. It's yeah. like, you know, well, you know, you're a storyteller and um, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. No, and I've started producing more lately and I, I love it. There, there's something, there's something really satisfying about it. It feels yeah. like like getting yeah. all the pieces in yeah. order feel, feels, uh, it's yeah, very fun. It is. It's like, a, it's like building and it's team thinking. building. Team building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it takes a village, you know, yeah. to do everything. And I have a great... I have a great team. Shout out to my light workers, by the way. If there's anybody from my team watching to today out there, um, I have a really I'm blessed with an amazing team of people that I work with, and um, lots of fun too. Um, I I'm seeing this question a lot in the chat, and and I, I have it on on this roster here. Um, but I know there's so many, and so it's hard to pick but if you if you had to That's narrow down a couple um yes. these are all signed okay um if, if you had to pick like what are if one of your favorites or some of your favorite touch by an angel episodes gosh we made so many well first of all can i just say that one of my most amazing unexpected blessings of my life was Della Reese. Mm -hmm. um when we shot the original pilot to touch by an angel Riley, even though it ended up shooting in Utah, the great state of Utah, where Riley was born, um, we shot the original pilot in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I remember um, my first day on set and, um, you know, I, I wanted to go introduce myself to Della Reese. I had, had, of course, I knew who she was, but I hadn't had the opportunity to meet her yet. And she was in the hair and makeup trailer. And... Um, I went in and I, you know, kind of politely stuck my hand out to shake her hand. And uh, you know what she said. She said, baby, what are you doing? She said, I don't shake hands. Mm -hmm. I'm a hugger. Wasn't she the greatest yeah. hugger? Yeah. The greatest hugger. And she took me in her arms and she, you know, there was no safer place in the world to be than in the arms of Della Reese. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the blessing just was that, throughout our time working together, we just became closest friends. And, you know, um, while we were filming together, um, Dumpsy, Della's daughter, uh, tragically passed. And um, 
you know, uh, we we all were so saddened for her and um, trying to comfort her and trying to, you know, to just to be present for her, to be there for her. And not long after she said to me, she said, you know, baby, God is amazing because I always knew that he brought me into your life because you needed a mother. She said, I just didn't realize he was bringing you into my life because I was gonna need a baby girl. Mm -hmm. She said, will you be my daughter? And I said, yeah. And she says, well, then I am your mama. And you know, she was, she was my mother. She's still my mother and she was Riley's godmother. And um, she was just a very important part of our family. And, um, you know, we, we miss her. We miss her every day, yeah. but she's still with us. Um, of that, I'm certain. Yeah, yeah. But yes, you asked me a question that I did not answer. No, you did not. <laughs> um, and would you care to? I would care to because there is... There's a number of episodes that, that, you know, there were so many episodes and so many amazing guest stars that I had the privilege. Yeah, of, of you had insane with. guest yeah, stars. Insane, every week. Because, because the nature of our story was, it wasn't like, um, you know, a, a, a courtroom drama or a medical drama where it was just the same set and the same mm -hmm. cast of characters every week. It was just myself. Della and John Dye, mm -hmm. who played our angel of death, Andrew, wonderful John Dye. And, and then each week we were supposed to be in a different town, a different context completely. So it allowed us to bring in this amazing array of guest stars. And so, and of those actors and performers that worked with us, quite a few of them were musicians. We always had a musical element in the show. In Sync was on there. Yeah, In Sync. I know, crazy. right? Yeah. yeah, Justin Timberlake, so cute, uh, and so young at the time. Um, <laughs> he still had like the kind of like ramen noodle hair yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a very memorable and very moving episode had Winona Judd um, playing the mother of a little boy who had cystic fibrosis, and. Um, um, it was just such a touching story, such a touching story. And then we were so sad to see Winona in the news this week with the passing of her mom, Naomi, who also did an episode of Touched by an Angel, a wonderful family. And our, our condolences go out to Winona and to Ashley at the loss of their, of their mom this week. But yeah, we had Muhammad Ali on the show. Um, he played an angel. We had Maya Angelou. Can we talk Maya Angelou on the show? Incredible. I mean, one of my favorite quotes of all time is a Maya, Maya Angelou quote that I have in Unexpected Blessings, which is that people may forget what you said and people may forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And um, And I love that because, you know, how important it is for me that that we are kind to each other, right? Mm -hmm. The kindness is so important. Mm -hmm. But do you remember when you were a little girl and we went to um, my Angelou was performing? I think we were in Pasadena yeah. or somewhere. Yeah. And um, uh, she was on a book tour, but she filled a you know a huge auditorium, and um, the book was called I want to say it was called Letters to My Daughter. Um, and you were, how old would you have been? maybe, you know, like sixth grade, yeah. maybe. Yeah, young. you were young. And she had this wonderful ability and um, where, you know, even though there might have been many, many people around, distractions around her, in that moment. You are the only person in the room. You have that too, oh. I think. Oh, thank you. You talk to someone. But she um, gave you... Her full oh attention. I'll never forget. That was insa insane that that happened. Yeah, it was, was very, beautiful. very grateful. But she she was in an episode of Touch by an Angel with Natalie Cole um, that, um, that stands out. But, yeah, over the years there were, you know, because we were almost 10 years on the show, so it was like hundreds of episodes. Um, but what a time in my life. Riley was, um, was born, uh, I want to say this, second season yeah the second mm. season third season that was 96 
yeah, I'm sorry, 96, whatever the math on that is. And so anybody that catches an old rerun of that and sees me walking around carrying a very large bag of shopping or a big, sometimes a big sun hat or <laughs> uh, overcoats, or sometimes Della would just jump in front of me because obviously there's some storylines <laughs> that we could, that you could hide. Can't have a pregnant you can have a pregnant angel, right? <laughs> we couldn't explain that. So, um, uh, you know, we, we got more and more creative as um, as the nine months went on of ways to disguise um, my ever growing belly. What was the easy? What was your favorite? Like the the surefire easiest one to to hide uh -huh. to use. Well, uh, often was like a uh, you know if I would come in a scene and there was a large couch and then I would just sort <laughs> of lean on the couch or sometimes a car door. Um, oh, car we, door is good. Yeah, we had the there was a red car. I think it was given to us by one of the storylines she gave Della's us. car? Della, well, actually the woman, this used to be our running, our running joke, because the woman had actually handed me the keys. And so I used to say, <laughs> well, it's my car. And she goes, it's my car. And you know, so it was like a, a running joke, but it was like a big red gorgeous Cadillac, yeah. a beautiful car. And so that was always a kind of really mm -hmm. reliable because the car door would open mm -hmm. and then I could just stand behind the car door yeah. and, um, uh, yeah but i mean we worked right through until i want to say the middle of may and riley was born june 3rd so i was wow pretty, you yeah you went like right up until you you couldn't anymore yeah. and then you as a little infant baby you know grew up on the set of a tv show it's amazing the amount of um touched by an angel infant merch uh is, is <laughs> exists only in our storage <laughs> yeah which we had people would send you know i mean it's like today everybody sends me um butterfly gifts and i'm so grateful and i was so grateful i went through the whole angel period but when riley was born we had more little uh onesies with wings on the back <laughs> and uh oh my god i uh, bet yeah you were <laughs> but you were so cute oh, of course well <laughs> So cute. All right. Am I? Um, how, how am I doing? Oh, look, that one's signed. You're you're down and well, falling down in the work. Floor. I am. Hold on. Okay, this one is signed. I could be signing this one for you right now for you or your mum or your grandmum. Premiercollectibles.com slash Roma slash Roma for that Mother's Day gift for that anytime gift. If you really want to get like early Christmas shopping, great gift um oh well you know the book also we're, we're being lighthearted here because it's mom and daughter and i actually haven't even seen riley for a few weeks because i um uh, was uh, traveling and just got back so we're also catching up here on air with you and we're being lighthearted and have a bit of banter but the, pr the the book also is filled with with um prayer and just a uh, um an opportunity to just to reframe things in your life. I think that's really, it's the book is filled with hope. Uh, it's filled with lovely stories. Um, I'm already getting great feedback from people who've gotten the book and who love it. And, um, and you know, hopefully able to, you know, to do some reflection on your own life and realize how much, you know, how many unexpected blessings there might be in your own life. You know, I mean, I'm always reminded of the symbol of the butterfly because, um, you know, the butterfly goes through uh, the metamorphosis and the cocoon. And, and we know that there's a struggle uh, for the butterfly to emerge and that if we tried to help the butterfly get out of the cocoon, that they, it wouldn't have actually mm -hmm. pushed the fluid, wouldn't break it. yeah, wouldn't have pushed the fluid through its wings that enable it to actually fly. And so, you know, I can't help but think about ourselves and our lives. And sometimes when we struggle, we go through challenges. You know, many of you out there maybe had the last few years were hard. People lost work. People lost their lives. You know, this was this was no joke. COVID was no joke. It was some people got very very sick. And, um, and, you know, and so there's really, real struggles in the world. But, you know, I hope that, th that this book serves as a reminder that sometimes when we come through these things, 
while we we wish we hadn't, there's a, still a strength that can be gained from being on the other side, and that that, that you know that we can look upon those things as the ble as the blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There there was there was a question someone asked um, that I feel like you just touched on just now, Kelsey, wanting to know, you know, what's what's a word of encouragement you'd give to someone who's in a season of um, waiting and despair. And, and yes. it, it is that, you know, that it's a, a piece of advice that you've always given me is is that it's just feelings pass. And that's not to diminish the the feeling or that moment or that experience, but that it's the only constant is change and yes. that things flow and um, yeah. and that it always moves. Through. Yes, it does always move through, but yeah, um, but something that you uh, have taught me too, you know, for anybody out there with, you know, I think that a hard thing as a parent is that, you know, particularly when your child is very young, you know, that you, you're the one making the decisions and, you know, you used to say to me when you're a little kid, you're not the boss of me, you know, and, <laughs> and it's like, well, I actually, probably said it last week. Well, no, you did say it last week, but, <laughs> but when you were a little kid, I could kind of say, well, actually... I am the boss yeah. of you. Um, and then, of course, you know, as your kids grow up to be, um, you know, to be living their own lives, independent lives, I think it's hard sometimes for the, for the moms to let go of that, you know, to let go of, you know, mm -hmm. wanting to, you know, wanting to not control, but wanting to really kind of get in there and, and make decisions for you. Yeah. And I remember you came to me and you said, you know, I... Can I, can I, could you allow me to make the distinction if I just want you to be? Yeah, like, the difference, mom. like asking between like, you know, like actually, could you help please give me advice versus can you just hold the space for me to be upset or be frustrated or, or not know? Because it's that same kind of thing. It's like, you know, as much as you, you love and want to have someone not, not feel those things. It's like, you you got to go through that on your own. You got to yes. learn and you got to, you know, make those decisions or make those mistakes or you have to go through that experience to then learn in a deeper way that isn't just like, you know, having someone else figure it all out yes. for you. Yeah. Which well, is hard. I can imagine that's it hard. It is hard. Well, you know, and particularly when your job is producer. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of producing is problem solving. It's like, you know, as soon as you got it all sorted out, then something else happens and you got to figure out the solution for it. So, when you come to me with an issue, my instinct, because also you're my child, is that I just want to fix it for yeah. you. But um, but the importance of being able to hold the space and hold the loving space, you know. And sometimes, you know, when somebody in your life that you love is going through something, you know, to take a moment also yourself and think, do, you know, is there something I can do to actually help here? Or would it just be helpful just to sit and lovingly? Yeah. Or ask. Like, yeah. Or ask that, be like, what do you need? You know, yeah, yeah, I think good. we, I think we. So wise. <laughs> well, I, because, you know, I do that with my boyfriend. It's like, if we're having an issue, it'll be like, or if one of us is having an issue, it'd be like, okay, I think sometimes, you know, if I'm going through something, sometimes I will have the foresight to tell him kind of like, if I need him just to hold space or if I actually want advice. But then sometimes if I'm like really in it or he's really in it, like, then the other will be like, is this like before we enter this conversation? Is this one? It's like, do you do you just want me to like listen and be there, or do you want kind of want tangible advice? Yes. And so, yeah, you know, I think it's you just feel out. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Who's but I but I think that you know particularly when there's loss, you know when someone has died, a lot of people think, well, I wouldn't know what to say. I I, I don't have words to comfort. I can't, I don't, you know. And I think that it's uh, important to remember. But just sometimes showing up. Yeah. And you being don't have there, to know. You don't have, there's not, you know, there isn't really anything to say except just to hold the space lovingly, maybe to, um, you know, to pray together, just to hold somebody, to hug somebody can be so valuable. I remember once, and I, I tell this story in the book, um, that I went to visit a children's hospital, primary children's in Salt Lake City, which was a wonderful facility when we were filming. And I went over there and it was Christmas time. And I had a, a, a Christmas Santa hat on and I was just, you know, just trying to be, be there really for the parents. The little kids didn't know who I was, but a lot of the parents uh, watched Touched by an Angel. 
but we went by the a bedroom door and a, a family came out and clearly uh you know the the, the sadness came out ahead of them mm. and the mother uh, and and it was apparent that the the, the little child had passed mm. and the and the mother saw me and she said oh monica mm. she said here you here you are she said i prayed that the angels would come for my baby wow. and here you are and i honestly didn't know what to say yeah that's i heavy. just i just held her in my arms and i was just uh, quietly in my heart praying praying for her and holding her and later that evening when i got back home i uh, was speaking with della and I, you know and i i was clearly upset and she said you know uh, she said this is just you know we're gonna have to sometimes just be be an angel for people and i said but i didn't want to pretend to be something i'm not you know she thought i was an angel and i'm just an actor and she, she i said she thought god sent me there and della ever wise della said and who said he didn't who said yeah. he didn't send you there and so we were able to just um you know be just show up for people i think as they is that one of our dogs? Yeah, I was like, and and someone sent Max. This is Max. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can see. Oh, there's so many books. Hi, honey. Um, if you can probably hear his snorts. Yeah. Um, we, but <laughs> hi. Um, <laughs> we love our dogs. Hi. I don't know if there's any dog lovers out there, hi. animal lovers, but we have three dogs. Um, Max and Red are our. Hi. English labs, and then we have a massive, big, beautiful, gentle Irish wolfhound, so called Ruby. Yeah. Um, but look, I did I sign all the books? You did, signed oh, all the books. All those books. So I'm hoping that you um, will get one. And if you, again, signed books, premiercollectibles.com slash Roma. If I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times. <laughs> I just, I can't stop saying it. Um, <laughs> Um, but isn't she great? <laughs> um, I mean, we have also a couple, a couple rapid fire. Oh, no, if they, you're interested are you, are you in that, are you going to put me on the spot with anything? No, they're Can very, I... they're fun. They're okay. silly. Okay. Silly. Um, let's just do a little silly, silly, quick. What's your biggest fear? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so silly. No. Just a really fun little lighthearted. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not a great fan of um, having my face underwater. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> it's not that lighthearted though. Who would you want to play you in a movie? Oh. Well, you. Other than me. Um oh gosh. Uh can I don't know. Okay. You tell me. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm joking. These don't need to be fast. Um uh da, anybody da, 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 got any da. ideas out there who would play me in a movie? Um, ooh, and be kind. What's your favorite word? That's a really oh. fun one. Oh, I know what As this word author. is. My now I may be pronouncing it wrong, but it's called hiriath, hiriath, and it's a Welsh word, like a Welsh Celtic word, and it means to have a longing for something that maybe never even was, mm. like a longing, a hiriath. And I feel this a lot, and I don't know if it's because I am Irish, but sometimes I get so homesick, like like really homesick. But then I go back to Ireland, and I'm still homesick. Mm. And it's almost like maybe it's a longing for the past, or a longing for childhood, or a longing for heaven, or a longing, but it's just this sort of almost unsatiable longing. Hurry up, it's a good word. I'd never, that's why I love that. Um, what, where do you want to go that you've never been? I would like to go to, what is that place that's like, they, they say it's the happiest place on earth. Oh. It starts with a B. Um, is it Bali? Bali, maybe? No. Bhutan? Bhutan, yes. Bhutan. That's it. One of those, uh, like somewhere exotic like that would be kind of fun to go to. Um, okay, okay, okay. But I, I love um, Ireland, of course, and anybody that hasn't been, you've got to do yourself a favor. Riley and I were in Ireland um, earlier in the spring, mm -hmm. um, 
that was so very special. And I also love Italy mostly because I love the food. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love I love Italian cuisine. Um, what's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, uh, unkindness. Okay, anybody that's unkind or rude, uh, that isn't considerate of somebody else's feelings, that really irks me. Particularly if it's somebody you know who's in a position like of more power over punching somebody down. else. Yeah, punching down. I haven't punching heard down. that. That's a, it's a comedy term. Um, it's usually it, that it's just like you know. It's usually it's like a punching punching down in a joke is that it's like you know use it's like you're at using your privilege mis or position of power to then like it. to then attack somebody below. that maybe can't even speak up for exactly. themselves yeah i can't exactly. stand yeah I can't stand it's like up. kicking someone while they're down it's just it's mm -mm. yeah um what okay well hold on because we we've talked about a lot of these so i'm going through um ooh, this is fun because i feel like this is uh you know I don't know if a lot of people know this. What's your middle name? Which I guess could be like, what's the kind uh, of origin of your name? Yes. Well, I, I my name, uh, in the same way that Riley's name was honoring her uh, grandmother, my mother, my name was a derivation of both of my grandmothers. My grandmother, Downey, was called Rose. And my grandmother, O'Reilly, was called Mary. So they took the R-O from Rose and the M-A from Mary and they joined them together and created the name Roma. And so it's a made up name. Like anytime I go to Italy and I'm walking around Rome and of course in Italian, Rome is Roma and my name is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks, oh, you, are you Italian? Do you have Italian? It's like, no, I'm a hundred percent Irish. But so my um, name, uh, the, the, my middle name would have been Mary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't Rosemary. It was Rose Mary. Rosemary, Downey. yeah. And they took R O M A and they made it up. But I've never was called Rose. I've only ever been called Roma. And then um, some years ago, when I became an American citizen, uh, there was an opportunity in the the forms that came in that you could um, officially change your name. And I said, you know, I think I'm finally going to legally mm -hmm. become Roma because it's the only name anybody's ever called me my whole life. That's so funny. I've never seen any like documents or like passports or driver's license or anything with, with Rose yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Many, I might, I may make a fish an old one after you, but Rose, Rose is, uh, and I never knew either of my grandmothers. They, mm -hmm. they had long passed when I, uh, grew up. Um, but you know, I'm so grateful because, you know, you'd think, I think the importance of family legacy and, just being grateful to your ancestors, you know, because, you know, here I am, I'm so grateful to America because it's um, been filled with unexpected blessings uh, from the career that has given me and uh, the life that we live here and the beautiful family that I have. And, um, but, you know, you, I look back on the, on the grandparents and, and, and the generations past, you think, you know, we all are standing on the shoulders of those that came before us and um, um, just, you know, but I have a, a great gratitude to the good old US of A. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, well, premiercollectibles.com slash Roma. I don't know if I'd mentioned that before to pick up your signed copy of Unexpected Blessings by Roma Downey. Is there anything else you'd like to offer or share? This has been so fun. Well, it really, really fun. I'm. Uh, just grateful to um, Premier Collectibles for allowing me the opportunity just to, to speak to some of the viewers and to read the comments and to, uh, it's nice just knowing that there's some people out there, I think represented from all around the, the nation. Um, just, uh, I just want to thank you all for joining and, um, you know, and, you know, keep us in your prayers. We'll keep you in our prayers and, Thank you and God bless. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. Go Bye. pick up again <laughs> unexpected blessings. <laughs>
Hey, this is John Acuff, New York Times best-selling author of seven books and someone who's done a live signing. If you like the one you just watched, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. It's full of amazing authors having great conversations and signing books for viewers just like you. So make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching today.